Hey everyone, welcome to Full Throttle Driving Academy. I'm Brian. I'm Dana. We're married and we're co-drivers of this vehicle, a 991.2 Porsche Cup car. Kind of got a lot going on, a little too much for my taste, a little too cluttered, but uh, we're advertising for people that we don't represent for free. <laughs> but that's Dana. You can see her cute little pink helmet in the car. She drives this car wicked fast. And that's not what we're here to talk about today, though. Today, we're going to do how to qualify. No, we're going to talk about what you may not know about qualifying. Oh, that's... Because I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about qualifying and beginners might say how to qualify. Why wouldn't you just go super fast? And then experts might say how to qualify. I know everything. So what we're going to talk about today is what you might think you know versus what you may not know about qualifying. Sounds awesome. All right. That's great, honey. Um, <laughs> I'm having a cocktail as we do this. It's happy hour. This is a Negroni equal parts gin, sweet vermouth, and Campari. That's what makes it red. And in Utah, you can only drink on what's today? Wednesdays? Yeah. So anyway. Is it? I don't even know what um, day it is. It has to be after 11 a.m. though. <sighs> All, All right. right. So, so we're going to talk about what you may not know about qualifying. And I'm going to start, if I may, with a question that is, when I, when I hadn't raced yet, I just time trialed, and you used to talk about your qualifying and having a different strategy, I used to wonder, why don't you just go as fast as you can in qualifying? So I've kind of got two questions. <laughs> I thought that, whoa, I haven't even had one yet. So I've got two questions. Number one is... What is your goal in qualifying? And number two is how is your strategy, is strategy different in qualifying than it might be in a race event? So let's start with number one. Why don't you just go as fast as you can? You mean the whole session or just one I mean, lap, two you, laps? Your goal seems to be to get to the front of the pack so that you're not having to fight traffic to get through grid or through the traffic, you know. So you want to get to the front of the grid. So what is different about qualifying and why would you drive it differently than a time trial or a race? Well, let's see. Well, in a race, okay, well, in a time trial, I think qualifying is very similar, but in qualifying, you generally are going to do an outlap, which I'm on right now. We're warming up the tires. You'll notice the car in front is a teammate of mine. He's the shop owner of Riot. And he, uh, the way that we've gridded in qualifying is important too because the preceding session, the warm-up session this morning, your lap time in that session determined your grid spot for qualifying. So my goal in the warm-up session is to get a, as fast a lap as possible and really use crappy tires. I ended up um, second on the grid. Mystery pass. And, um, while we're warming up, there's no line here. <laughs> so, <laughs> but you can you can critique all you want when I do the actual <laughs> fast lap. This is the out lap. So basically, there's a guy behind me who is my main competitor in the same car. This, the guy in front of us is in a very heavily modified 991.1 um, cup car with a big motor and a lot of aero. He is probably faster, but I, this is my first time in this car on this track configuration. It's also my very first time on new tires. Ever. So, so anybody who <clears throat> has beaten Brian to go, woohoo, at the Brian Van Noy, you need to know that until this past weekend, Brian was never on new tires ever. Thanks, honey. I appreciate that. He's a stud. So I'm on these really beautiful, brand new Yokohama slicks. And what we're doing right now, I'm trying to create enough distance between the guy in front of me and also create a gap from the guy behind me so he doesn't draft me. So I'm kind of playing both ends here. I'm trying to not let the guy behind me think he can get super close to me on the, on the final corner because then he can draft me all the way down the main straightaway. At the same time, I'm not quite exactly sure how fast the guy in front of me is going to go. I want to make sure I don't catch him, so I'm not going to get too close to him and try to draft him just because I don't know his capabilities and never driven with him. I think his car should have a slightly higher cornering speed than mine with all the downforce, so I think he's probably going to be a little faster than me. But nonetheless, I'm not going to take any chances. This is the second to last corner. What I'm trying to do is accelerate a lot, brake a lot, and get those tires nice and hot and get them up to temperature. And I didn't quite succeed. Um, now, this is the final corner. So you might think, oh, this looks like a crazy line, right? It doesn't look right. Yeah. And the Although reason... I know how you take this corner. 
you normally you'd be over here and you would kind of come in and kind of hug this tight and then do a late apex and get all the way out on the curb. But when you're on your penult ugh, your outlap penultimate penultimate corner, is this the penultimate or the yeah. Anyway, before the main straightaway, our main goal is to get the highest possible trap speed at the start finish line. Because all we care about in the qualifying session is is one lap at a time. Primarily, I'm going to try to do my fastest lap on this very first lap and then come immediately in to the pits after that, save my tires for the race because I got one set of tires for four races this weekend, which is going to be almost impossible. So I'm trying to conserve tires, but at the same time, I want to get the fastest possible qualifying lap, which is going to determine my grid position for this race, which would be my first race on this track configuration. So. Okay, wait, I want to unpack just a little bit of what you just said, because there were some things in there that kind of surprised me. Okay. And that was... Let me have a drink. You don't you want... Do okay, you drink away. So you didn't want Esikoff behind you. Am I allowed to say his name? Yeah. There are 15 Esikoffs out there. So you don't want Esikoff drafting you. Right. And you don't want to draft Shumway. So... I, in retrospect, I should have drafted Shumway because he ended up having faster cornering speed, so I would not have reeled him in on the lap. I would have been better off drafting him closer on this first corner and carried um, a lot of speed down the straightaway and actually gained on him. And then he would have started pulling away from me in turn one. Okay. So I think <clears throat> what you just said is certainly not in the minds of most time trialers. I mean, what you, what you were just talking about, you're talking about your warm up lap and you're drafting this person. You don't want that person drafting you, whatever. I think that was really important. So I'm glad you talked about all of that. So now you're on the mm -hmm. penultimate, you've got these two corners left and then you're going for it as fast as you can to yep. do hopefully just one, one lay lap. down a hot lap. You right. always say, I'm going to lay down one. Now, what if you don't lay down that hot lap that time? What if you just go, oh, I sucked. If, I, if I'm going to start finish line and I like the lap time and I think it's good enough, I'm going to come in. It, good enough, meaning I'm going to get a grid position that I'm pretty happy with, even if I know I'm not perfect. If it really sucks or I caught a car in front of me, let's say, hit traffic, whatever, or I totally miss an apex, something like that. Then I'm just going to do one more consecutive lap. If I totally screw up the first lap and I know it, like let's say I blow it on corner one, then I'm just going to slow down immediately and let the guy behind me pass me, maybe let a couple other cars pass me. And I'm going to go slowly, try to just keep my tires nice and warm, come around again, and then get one more flying hot lap. And you see this in Formula One. Okay, wait, I got to ask do two, They never do two flying laps in a row. They always do a fast lap, slow lap, fast lap, slow lap. So... That's what I try to do is go for the fastest lap when the tires are the freshest. If that fails, abort the lap, go slow the rest of the way around, then do another fast lap or do the first lap really fast. And if I think I can do better on the second lap, just keep going and do another second lap. But if for whatever reason, I just totally think the session sucked, You'll do one more. I will okay. slow down and then try to get a, a gap, a nice healthy gap. And that's where the radios are so important. You want somebody on your radios that can tell you, you know, slow down, speed up, find a gap. Here's a good spot to be so you can go for a clean lap. You got to have a clean lap. For okay. Your I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. Let's pretend you weren't on these beautiful stickered tires that you had this weekend for the first time in your life. Uh -huh. And you're on the crap tires you're usually on. Do you give up a qualification position and start further down the grid in order to save your tires, so you don't want to use them on qual I'm asking you, do you want to not use them on qualifying so that you have better tires going into the race itself? No. If I'm even on, as usual, I'm on takeoff tires for qualifying, I'm still going to go as fast as I can and try to get as high really? up the grid as possible. So you wouldn't compromise a position in qualifying to save your tires for the race? No, it's only one lap. And it's more important to get grid Call position. Call me astounded. I mean, it, it doesn't, you want to... Because the grid position, if I get a good start, which I did in the first race, I killed everybody on the start and I got a good jump. I got into the lead of the first race and I was about a second ahead and I got three or four laps into the race and then I hit some curbing when I hit the brakes and I spun out and I totally destroyed my race. But this qualifying session ended up good because I ended up qualifying third, I think, in my class, but I past both of the guys at the start and I was in the lead. Okay, so um, you wanna take us through the rest of your qualifying flying lap? Yeah, this is the first corner coming into the fly and I'm taking a really wide line here. Yeah. And I wanna just set up the highest possible speed 
So I'm going to try to... Why are you taking a different line than you would in a time trial line? You always, in a time trial line, you'd go your fastest, which is more to the left there. Why wouldn't no, you? No, on the out lap, you all only care about the speed at the start finish line. The only thing that matters is my exit speed on this corner. So I don't care about my entry. Okay. I just want to take a nice big wide line and start accelerating back as far as I can. Ideally, I, if I could start the straightaway here and just go like this. Okay, Th that's and ideal, normally you it would, makes the straightaway that normally much longer. you would be farther to the left and take a bigger track yeah. out because you're worried more about the speed itself. Yeah, like in a time trial line, you'd be more to the left. Well, if I was doing consecutive laps, I would be here. Right. And then you would be also defending people. You can't be way over here to the right. Okay. That would slow down your consecutive lap times in a race because in a race it's how much distance can you cover in the allotted time it's it's the totality of the race this is just one hot lap so all i care about is how fast can i get going headed down this main straightaway all right do it so i get a decent run here see i don't need to hit the apex i'm just trying to get speed i shifted a little too early into third gear i should have gone faster in second but i don't know how much grip i'm gonna have because again this is my first time on new tires, they were still under heated. They weren't up to temperature yet. The pressures were still too low, so they felt really squishy to me. My top speed gets up to 157. I do over slow the car here. I get up to down to 71, 72. I could have kept it up around 74. Good line there, I didn't miss that. Light braking, I turned in. I'm Are you still, still worried about the guy in your butt or the guy in front of you or anything? At this point, he's at least a good two seconds behind me. We have a good gap, so I'm not even thinking about him. That was good. I'm starting to feel the tires are still a little squirmy underneath me. They're just not quite perfect, but they're way faster. So are you thinking you way might have to faster. do another flying lap if they're not perfect? Um, I was thinking about it, but then I saw the Delta timer and look, compared to used tires, Almost look, I'm already two seconds. two seconds ahead of my best time from all the warm-up sessions combined on crappy tires. So that's how much better yep. stickers are. Uh, you know, we're barely a third of the way through the lap and we're two and a half seconds ahead where I was at a 259.9. This, this, this is going to cost us a lot of money for you to have this realization. <laughs> this epiphany is going to be very expensive. Uh, see, the, t the car got squirmy there. I over accelerated. This, I went a little wide. Not too bad. This, the car is pushing, pushing a little bit. No, but it's pushing. It's not exactly quite perfect. So it's not perfect. Are you thinking you've got to do another qualifying lap? At this point, I'm just really excited because I'm already three and a half, three, three seconds. Yeah, almost. So I'm enjoying this. And this, I, I overcooked that entry and I had to slow down too much. Um, still a pretty good speed there again. You saw the car get loose. I had the sway bar set wrong and now I know in retrospect how to, I fixed it for Sunday. But if I had fixed it in this race, I know I could have been probably a good second faster because the car would have been much more stable. Which would have helped on my less corner since entry. Spun out. If you'll notice, the car gets really squirmy on corner entry. Did yeah. you say? I spun out in the race, yeah. Now it's starting to come to me. The car's starting to feel really good. Coming into the first attitude. Yep. Clean there, pretty decent. Clean there. So if you've ever done UMC, these are the attitudes. Yep. World, world famous, I'm sure. <laughs> Probably. That's <laughs> good. Hit this line pretty well, a little bit of curve, nice, tracked totally out all the way. Out. Coming into the uh, last three corners. Seems, yeah, carried 80 through that, track all the way out past the curve. Nobody does that, by the way. If you're watching his line, nobody does what you just did, and it's brilliant. Mm -hmm. I got too squirmy there, though. I overcooked it there on the exit. That's the line you normally do in a race right there. And then come around. Pretty good exit. And, you know, I'm already going to be about six seconds faster. So. Okay, so even though you had some squirmy tires and some moments where you thought, eh, it could have been better, you're going to keep that as you're flying lap and you're not going to go, uh, I mean, you're going to go in now because you want to save the tires. I, I was on the radios and I was pretty happy with that lap and I'm thinking, hmm, maybe I can get a little faster. So I just said, screw it, I'm going to stay out. And this lap, I was about the same. I did another. Okay. Yeah, I, was, I, was, I thought about it and I kept going and I said, if I kept seeing improvement, I was gonna stick with it, and I'm kind of like right at that same point. See the delta? It's like. All right, so I have a question. So I'm watching your delta. You're in the red, and yeah. so now you're putting wear and tear on the, green. the tires. <laughs> you're in the green, but you're putting wear and tear on the tires, which is gonna take away from the race. 
do you regret like do you I know one lap makes a difference on these beautiful stickers so do you regret that you went out again and pushed it as hard as you did and didn't just keep that perfect flying lap for the I think, I think this this weekend was more about experimentation on these tires I, I would have I think wanted to feel what happens to the tires when they do come up to temperature what am I going to have to work with I've got totally clean air in front of me I got clean laps I just wanted to test it out to see what the car could do. Okay, so pretend so. it wasn't about experimentation for the sake of people who are trying to learn from this. So at this point, should your minus, you know, 0.28 seconds, do you think that maybe now you're just scrubbing the tires and, and ruining them for no reason? Right, right at this point, I'm three tenths down. I, I abort the lap and I move over and let Greg pass me. So okay. watch right here. I moved over and now I'm going to come in. So he, he was actually... Damn, that's a pretty yeah, so he he was having another flyer. He was having a good lap. He actually out qualified me. Um, he has a lot live experience at this track, and uh, he was, I was still learning this car on this track, especially with these tires. You have to really understand what what grip you have. And I, you know, in one lap, I almost figured it out. But now I know I would have had probably I would have started with three or four more pounds of pressure in the tires to begin with. Would have had a bit more platform underneath me. I would have had stiffer sway bars all around in the front and the rear. Car was set up a little bit too squirmy for me, a little too loose, and I had to compromise the anchor speed. So I'm pretty confident I can get down to probably a high 252. Okay, so let's get back to which the would point be of qualify me on pole. The point of video. The point of the video is what you may or may not know about qualification and qualifying, and I hope everybody learns something. If B, if you had to tell people what to take away from what you should know about qualifying as either, or, I mean, time trailers got to qualify too. We we uh, are qualifying in the sense that your fastest lap puts you on grid in the place that you need to be. So, exactly. you know, time trailers are qualifying too. And then when we race, obviously qualification position is super important. So. Is there anything in particular that you think people should walk away with that may not be super obvious? The thing I would say is coordinate with your other drivers, make friends with them, and tell people what your intentions are in qualifying because I had already worked out with the guy in front of me and the guy behind me. Let's not pass each other on the outlap. Let's warm up our tires. Let's, get, let's give all of us a good chance to have a really fast lap with clean air and no, no stress. And we all cooperated. And because of that, we qualified one, two, three. So I think it all really, really paid off. And I think that's one takeaway I would give. Awesome. Hope everybody uh, learned something about qualifying laps. And I know I did. So I uh, hope you're enjoying Full Throttle and Brian's expertise. Thanks for watching, everybody. And by mm -hmm. the way, if you want some coaching, if you want to take a tutorial like this and have us uh, me annotate that, with arrows and say where you should be on the lines. Uh, currently, we're charging $99. You get a full uh, session tutorial where I go through it, annotate, and coach you, and then send you the video back for your review. And it's really helping people save multiple seconds per lap, and they seem very happy with it. So I'm going to start promoting it more, and I hope we can help you out. And I got to say, Brian's really too <clears throat> humble here. He's not just talking about the line. He will get into your hand position and the gravel on the road and the camber of the road. And he gets into the detail that I've never heard anybody do. He's got really an amazing gift for this. So if you haven't um, yet had the pleasure of having Brian critique one of your videos, please do so. I think you'll be super pleased and then you'll have it forever and ever and uh, become a better driver. Thanks. You can check that out at fullthrottledriving.com. Look at the store and you'll see the uh, video coaching or pre-event coaching. And it's uh, only $99 right now. Thanks, everybody. Bye.